So in January of 2019, I decided to close my business. And in this video, I will be telling you the reasons why. For those of you that have been following me on Instagram for all this time, you know that I do a lot of photography and video work. And that was mainly what my business was about. I was running a photography and filmmaking business. I was basically self-employed. I was working from home. Um, but generally, I used to do all business by myself. And I ran that business for close to a year before I decided to close shop. So this video is divided into three parts. Each of the three parts is the reason as to why I closed my business and each of, the, each of them goes into the specifics as to why that is. Um, the videos were, sh were also shot at uh, various times so um, you will see me in probably a different outfit or something at one or two times in the video. Uh, but other than that, I think let's get into this video. The first reason that I closed shop or closed my business was I was not disciplined enough uh, to achieve the goals that I had set for my business. What do I mean by discipline? I, I mean that, that there were just some habits that I needed to have and I needed to have automated or I needed to have reached uh, a state of automaticity. That simply means that they were automatic. There were things that would happen automatically. Now, I would like to stress this. There are two things that I think that as a self-employed person who is running their own creative business, there are two things that you need to be very disciplined at. And that is leveraging time and staying energized. Leveraging time is simply the act of making use of the time that you have and making more time within the time that you have, if that makes sense. Right. So in order for you to leverage time, the one thing, the one habit that you must have is being able to wake up early. If it is waking up at 5 a.m., you must be able to do it every single day. Me, me, me. Ha. <laughs> I was, it's just a lie. I used to lie to myself so much about waking up early. Like I have struggled with it for a really long time. One of the challenges that creatives have is they have, uh, they, 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 they suffer from, is it nostalgia or insomnia? It's in sno insomnia, not nostalgia. So a lot of creatives have insomnia where they lack sleep during the night. Okay, so that means that they will um, use uh, night hours to actually work on their projects. But that creates a problem. If you're working through the night, it means that you will not be able to wake up. You will not be able to wake up early. If you work through the night and you sleep like at 4 a.m., it is a bit unrealistic to set uh, to start waking up at 5 a.m. because you only get an hour of sleep. You know, this would result in me um, waking up late. I'd be waking up at 10 a.m. or even 11 a.m. in the morning. There are clients who are very specific. They would say, you know. I want us to have a meeting at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. That's the only time I'm available. So I'll probably wake up late, meet the client maybe an hour later. That meeting takes a bit, a little bit longer, so it eats into time that I wanted to have for a project or something. Because I slept late, I'm probably exhausted and tired, and by the time I'm getting home, I want to sleep fast. Then after sleeping, I get into a state of insomnia, so I have to work through the night again, and the cycle continues. I feel like that, that that's one of the things that I was I, I was not able to create any discipline in, and it kind of um, injured my business, in so to speak. The second thing that uh, I talked about with discipline, staying energized. When I talk about staying energized, I simply mean that you need to incorporate exercise into your lifestyle. And I'm not talking about, and I, when I talk about exercise, I'm not talking about seriously going to the gym or going out and getting a gym membership and stuff like that. There are simple and effective exercises that you can do from home. You don't have to spend much on a gym membership, right? And the simple act of just going out and taking a walk or doing a few sprints, a few push-ups in the house, those things I have found since I closed my business, because these are things I'm trying to kind of incorporate into my life right now, I'm finding that 
I am no longer sluggish. I'm also finding that um, I concentrate more on my work. I find that there are activities I couldn't do for very long and now I can, I, I actually can, you know, endure them for much, much longer than I could. And it is small steps like those that are going to help you stay energized even when you're working. One of the things about, uh, take for example film work, the, I remember the first time I used a shoulder rig, I got home and my hands were burning. And mind you, a shoulder rig is not a very piece of equipment. It, okay, it depends on what the, the type of shoulder rig it is, but this wasn't a very huge piece of equipment and I didn't have a camera even larger than my hand on it, but my hands were burning because I had been you know, moving around with it all day. And that posture just, like, I don't know, right? And then because I'd been walking around the whole day, it also became very difficult. Like my legs were, my legs were hurting, right? So those two things, I think those two things are the most, are the things that I think you need to be disciplined in. I did not know anything about business. Nakuna, do you know a single thing? One of the pieces of advice that I will tell you is that before you, if you have identified an industry that you want to go into, I think it is very important to get some information. Know something small about the industry you're getting to. Know, try and figure out where you're going to get clients. Right. Try and figure out what you know. What what are some of the the products that sell quickest or the products that sell best? Right. And if you're getting into a part of that industry that doesn't have that many clients, how can you craft a niche for yourself in such an area? Right. Um, do you have the money to actually get into that business? Right. Then there's also things that you kind of need to start learning. You need to start learning how to budget, how to do accounting. <laughs> Kwanzaa accounting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, you need to learn marketing. You need to understand how to use social, you know, to use the social medias. Um, you you need to learn how to cold call people, like literally just calling up people and asking them for work. Uh, then you also have to, are you, do you have the necessary skills to be able to thrive in that industry or to at least keep up with uh, the people who've already been in the industry for a while? There are all these small things, these small and big things that you have to balance and learn at the same time. Now, I am not saying that you need to learn each and every one of these things, okay? But I think it will be less painful for you to get into that industry if you have some awareness on what happens. Now, one of the lessons that I learned the hard way is that uh, better awareness will always lead to better choices, which will finally lead to more impactful results. You do not want to learn that the hard way. You'd rather get in with some awareness, um, make better choices, and have more impactful results. That will work better for your business other than just diving in because you have the passion. Passion is one thing, but business is another. So please, if any of you is thinking about starting a business without knowing anything about, about what happens in that industry, please refrain, stop. And if you're in business and you don't know jack about business, please, funga too for a while, you will come back later. So the third and the final reason that I want to talk about as to why I closed my business was I had no startup capital. I didn't have a single dime when I started my business. That was a huge mistake. Let me give you a bit of a backstory. So by the time I decided to start my business, I had just left a really bad job, like a really bad job. And during the time that I had this job, I had done quite a number of gigs and I'd been paid some of the gigs actually went very, very well. Like I'd been paid, you know, some good amount of money. And this is what I thought would happen. Like, because I had two or three gigs that paid me very well, I thought now that I get into business full time, you know, this, this, this is certainly going to be the trend. Uh, but, uh, you know, 
Hey, let us just say life is life. What I thought would happen is not what happened. Um, clients are not regulars because I didn't have that much of a reputation in, in the industry. So I, I was finding just a really difficult time getting clients. Secondly, the clients that I got uh, were not really ready or willing or did not have the finances to pay for some of the projects that they wanted me to do. And it meant that I had to take peanuts at the end of the day, right? Now, if I had actually um, not jumped straight into starting a business and probably looked for another job first so that I could make up the savings, right? To keep myself, you know, um, to keep myself grounded in the time that I was really trying to start up this business. I think to date, I would still be in business. Per se. I think it is very important that you understand that a business is starting, it is, you know, really fragile. You need to keep it afloat. You need money to keep it afloat. Um, rule of thumb is if you think your business need X amount of money, multiply that value by pi. That's the actual amount of money you need. And when I, I've, I've done calculations for myself, uh, and when, I, and, and when I take my X value and multiply it by pi, it is a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of money. It's a big, it's a big sana. When you, when you start a business, there's a very likely chance that in the first 1,000 days, which is about three years, you will not make any profit, right? And in that time, you need the money to keep that business going, right? If you employ people, you need to pay them within that time. If uh, there will be expenses, there'll probably be rent, there'll probably be travel, there'll probably be need to rent some things. And it really depends on the business, to be honest. Uh, but at the end of the day, no matter what business you're doing, you're going to have to fund it somehow. So don't get into business if you don't have the money to run it. Let me speak specifically for the guys that are doing uh, film work and photography. You guys know the value of equipment or how much equipment costs basically. It is expensive. You know it is also expensive to get things like insurance for the same equipment. Moving it around, hiring, getting people who are actually qualified to handle the equipment. It is a very expensive, it is, uh, it is a money intensive business. It, is it money intensive? Is that even? I'm trying to say this. Whatever business you're doing, you're going to need startup capital. It doesn't matter if you're knitting. You need the money to buy the strings or ropes. Are they ropes? They're not ropes, they're strings. <laughs> now, some of the things that I have said are not set in stone. Um, different, different people are going to approach uh, their businesses in different ways. There are those of you who will be able to work through the adversity. If you don't know the meaning of adversity, Nimashida Dumia. Those of you who are, there are those of you who are going to be able to work through adversity and come out the other side very successful, right? There are those of you who are going to be able to get the funding that will keep their businesses afloat for their thousand days that I talked about and, you know, uh, sort of, you know, come out also, you know, shining or winning or whatever. Then there are those of you who are probably also in my, in, in sort of my category where we need to, you know, find a job and then do this as a side hustle first and then feed that over time and then sort of come out the other side uh, shining or winning as well. What I want to say to you is that whatever strategy you take, it depends on you. It depends on your situation. Nothing is set in stone. There is no wrong or right way. It, it is all dependent on the situation that you're in. And I'd advise you to choose a strategy that you feel best suits your situation. Uh, finally, I feel like also this video has been made at a time when things are very uncertain, so we really can't go on talking about businesses or we really can't talk about building businesses at this time since we have a receding economy, people are losing their jobs, a lot of people have already lost gigs. So what I wanted, the reason why I made this video is, is mostly to encourage you uh, to take the time to think through, right? your businesses especially if you're self-employed uh, think about things you know pragmatically these are not the only things that 
uh, the things I've talked about in this video are not the only things you should look about. There's a lot more to it. Your business has very many sides and you need to take the time and just assess and reassess some things, right? Look at the future uh, as it comes because you never know what tomorrow will bring, especially at this time. Um, and I think I want to end with Msisaukuosha Mikono, just because you're wearing masks, just because you're wearing masks does not mean you're so. Please wash your hands. And then, kuna watu wanafikiria 5G na cause this thing. Right, so guys, those are the three reasons as to why I closed my business. Uh, now, since I shared the first video, um, a lot of you guys, a lot of some of you guys rather, uh, have shared with me your stories and your experiences. And I just want to say that your stories and experiences um, have been very inspiring and encouraging at the same time. Uh, they have also given me a number of ideas that I would want, a number of topics actually that uh, I could make videos for and share with you guys here and we can continue this um, you know conversation finally I just want to say that you guys stay safe wash your hands wear a mask and 5g does not cause coronavirus please <laughs>